So let me begin with the legislative proposals addressing Title VII of Dodd-Frank. All six of these proposals are common sense and bipartisan approaches to provide clear rules of the road for the market participants while ensuring a robust regulatory regime exists over the marketplace. Now, many of these proposals, including the end user, the inter-affiliate and indemnification bills, actually passed the House, the full House, by a large margins last year, and I hope we do that again this year. You know, thousands of companies, big and small, across the state of Michigan, as, as well as the whole United States, uh, utilize derivatives uh, to better manage the risks that they face every day. The use of these derivatives to hedge risks uh, benefits the global economy by allowing for a range of businesses, from manufacturing to healthcare to agriculture, to improve their planning and forecasting and offer more stable prices to their customers as they're managing those dips. Uh, by imposing undue regulatory burdens on end users, this could increase costs and reduce liquidity, and it would prevent end users from using these markets efficiently and effectively. My bill simply requires FSOC to con conduct a study of the impacts of implementing the Credit Valuation Adjustment Capital Requirement, or CVA, will have on U.S. consumers, end users, and U.S. financial institutions. Europe European Basel III rules are being finalized and would provide a significant exemption from CVA market risk weighted assets for European banks. I have some serious questions about the impact the European exemption will have on U.S. financial institutions and the larger U.S. economy. To me, this exemption will provide a significant financial business advantage to European banks, European customers, and European end users at the expense of American businesses, banks, and end users common sense basic legislation that will simply ensure that non-financial commercial end users of over-the-counter derivatives are not subject to margin requirements that Congress, and that's the key part, Congress never intended. And it ensures that regulators do not attempt to exercise authorities that they were not granted by Congress in ways that would harm the economy by diverting working capital from productive uses, such as promoting economic growth and job creation. A lack of such an exemption could lead to regulatory arbitrage, increases in consumer prices, as we just heard, and some firms could abandon hedging altogether, or a loss of jobs as vital working capital is tied up in margin accounts with financial institutions. H.R. 992, the Swaps Regulatory Improvement Act, does two basic things. One, it will allow depository institutions to continue providing a spectrum of client services and products that would otherwise be unnecessarily prohibited. Two, our bill will clarify one of the unintended consequences of Dodd-Frank, the complete prohibition on swaps trading applied to foreign banks operating in the U.S. Sh Section 716 sponsor Senator Lincoln acknowledged this significant oversight, saying this double standard was not intended. You can't get much clearer than that. It's also hard to find such a clear example of potential arbitrage as Section 716 and the unilateral prohibition it imposes on American businesses. Foreign jurisdictions have not followed suit, and there is a clear possibility of market share being pushed overseas because our banks can't provide the same products and services. Furthermore, multiple regulators have highlighted the spinning off swaps trades may actually increase systemic risk. Affiliates that will house these pushed out swap trades will be less supervised and not as well capitalized as the banks that currently engage in these trades. 